We're on set for NVIDIA shoot, shooting for the GPU. <laughs> shooting for something. Yep. Take two. What's going on guys? So we are here on set. We're shooting with the uh, RTX 3090 GPU, which is super rare right now. You can't really get your hands on it. So yeah, thank you NVIDIA for sending one over. As you can see, it's like this super industrial vibe. I really like it. Um, and yeah, in here is where we have, if you'd like to follow me, mtvcribs.com. And you can see in here is the room we're going to be filming, I guess 90% of, oh, sorry. 90% of the whole thing. And this is what it looks like now with these fluorescent light bars across the top. We're gonna to figure out how to light it. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty cool. So I hope you guys enjoy the BTS. Let's roll the intro. Let's roll the <laughs> beetle. Let's go. <laughs> right, so we're gonna do a little bit of gaffing, which yeah. is lighting the uh well lighting the scene so me and keenan clang our heads together and see what we want to do but slightly annoying situation within here the fact that we can't really control the external natural light coming in because we've got skylights up in here however not a problem because in here we've got quite a lot of control so we can light it up with our own lights and I'll, uh... how many people does it take to screw a light bulb it depends if they're idiots or not and we clearly <laughs> are yeah, have you got a mic So we're kind of going for a top light vibe, like a bit of top light. We've got the Nan light, uh, Pavo tube. Which one is it? Is it the 6C? Yeah, Luke? It's the 6C. Now we've got the fog machine. We're going to haze up the room. Um, yeah, let's go. Okay, so here is this setup inside this kind of little space. Here's a lighting setup. Up here we have a Nan light tube. Then back here we have a Amazon tube light, um, 70 pounds. I bought two of them, they're pretty cool. Um, we're gonna use that as just kind of like an ambient light source. Down here we have a fog machine, which is not plugged in. Um, as you can see here, so we're gonna haze up the room in a sec so we can get these light rays when it's coming down. Got the monitor and everything over here ready for setup. But yeah, super cool. Can't wait to get started and actually get shooting when the light gets a bit dark. What's going on people? So I hope you like that little BTS sequence. If you haven't watched the video yet, then what I suggest you do is, well, I think it's this one. I think it's, if you click this card, pause this video, open it in a new tab, then come back here because what I'm gonna be doing is talking about how the GPU and Nvidia Studio have really improved my creative workflow. I wanna first say one massive thank you to Nvidia for believing in me and also the awesome people involved. I'll link all of them in the description. So as you guys know, I was sent this absolute beast of a PC. You can kind of see it like right there. Inside that PC is the RTX 3090 graphics card from Nvidia. Um, the very few people to actually get my hands on one and actually use it for basically everything that I do. Nvidia Studio is a whole platform of software and hardware designed with technology to make creative workflows more efficient and basically make the whole process a lot faster. With some pretty extensive hardware and software testing, it combines powerful graphics cards with dedicated studio drivers to ensure the best compatibility and performance with software development companies like Blackmagic for DaVinci and Adobe for Premiere Pro to provide the best experience and functionality for their users. So let's quickly talk about how NVIDIA Studio has kind of helped me as a Premiere Pro editor. If you guys are Final Cut users, you can 
can get out of here. The first thing that I've noticed the most is how smooth the timeline is when I'm like scrubbing through it. And as you can see right now, we have the creativity accelerated video timeline up. It's very intensive. There's a lot going on. As I scroll through, you can see we have tons of sound layers, tons of video layers, 35 millimeter film grain overlays. And another thing that you have to realize is that the timeline is in 4K. We shot everything on the Blackmagic 4K and Blackmagic 6K. I could preview this timeline. I could scrub through this timeline at full playback resolution, full pause resolution, and with high quality playback on, and with display color management that requires GPU acceleration on. Hardly any lag. Maybe when I'd press play, there'd be like a half a second lag, but then it would play through perfectly. As you can see right here, I've got the show dropped frames indicator on. When it's green, it's playing through at normal speed. And when it's orange, it's dropped a couple frames. We can see it's actually pretty smooth. It drops maybe a couple frames, but then it catches up to itself. It still stays orange, but when you pause and play again, it's green, it's no problem. The timeline that's playing through with the 3090, I didn't render all the effects into or out. As you can see the bar is still yellow at the top and it's not green so I'm playing it through without it actually having been rendered. Now to be fair the black magic codec is quite easy to work with but the fact that I'm having 4k and 6k footage layered on top of each other and it's still playing back pretty smoothly is good. The next thing I want to talk about is decoding and encoding H.265 footage. H.265 or HEVC is kind of like a high efficiency codec which in my opinion I don't think is kind of efficient at the moment. I say at the moment because an older generation computers and laptops they couldn't really handle the footage very well it was very very hard to decode as you can see right now I've got some h.265 footage kindly provided by my friend Matt Cousin and just to prove it to you we can go in the properties and we can see you've got HEVC 422 10-bit footage uh, at 4K, all shot on the EOS R5. And me and Matt talk a lot and he tells me that every single time he shoots in this, he has to just wait for proxies to be created and he's sitting there for like three hours. I basically said, look mate, give me some of your footage and let me see how it does. We're literally scrubbing to and from, no issues, no lag, no jumpy frames. I first discovered H.265 footage from the Mavic 2 Pro. When I was shooting D-Log, I was like, oh, it's a high efficiency code, this is great. Put it on my laptop, next thing I know, it's it's like doing it's doing it's doing all sorts of madness and i was like what is going on i had no idea right now as you can see i'm adding some lumetri effects on it i'm going pretty ham with the color grade within premiere pro here um, i also add gaussian blur and a lens distortion just to add some gpu accelerated effects i keep everything on full still got display color management on playing through very very well if there are a couple of drop frames pause it Play it again and it will be completely fine. So moving on from decoding H.265 footage, we're going to be talking about encoding and how hardware encoding has kind of changed my export times. If you didn't have an NVIDIA GPU, you'd actually have to use software encoding, which basically uses the CPU to export your video. I did two tests between H.264 and H.265 footage and using software encoding and hardware encoding and seeing which one was faster. Bringing up the Creativity Accelerated project again we're going to be exporting this timeline out now just to recap it's a 1 minute 33 timeline in 4k and we've got a ton of sound effects and a ton of clips and overlays and text but both settings were completely the same aside from the codec we've applied the qt gamma compensation lut to basically make the colors look better we've also got vbr one pass and 48 megabits per second for the bitrate. Here are the results. We're gonna start with the H.264 encoding. With software encoding only, we're not using the hardware. We had a time of three minutes and 34 seconds. So that's not too bad. The video obviously is one minute 33, but with the hardware encoding on, we got a time of two minutes and 33 seconds. We shaved off a minute of the export time just by turning on hardware encoding. The next thing we're gonna do is move on to the H.265 encoding. Now the H.265 encoding was actually a little bit mind blowing to me. I haven't really ever encoded in H.265 before. With software encoding, we got a time of one minute and 59 seconds, so just under two minutes. The next thing that's pretty cool is when we turn on hardware encoding, we got a time of one minute and 25 seconds. 
This is shorter than the length of the video. So the GPU was actually encoding the video faster than you'd actually watch it back in real time. The last thing I kind of want to talk about is, you know, as I develop as a creator and my skills improve, I start to delve into different programs a bit more. By that, I mean like delving into After Effects, the end logo animation of the hero film. I created it myself. I was pretty happy with it. I've never really done anything like that before. And the main reason for that is knowing that my previous computer would not actually be able to handle me creating that obviously i'd be able to do it but it'd be a very very slow process with the new graphics card i could actually watch that thing in full time at full res and make changes and not actually have to render it out before I can watch it back. Knowing that my computer can now handle whatever I want to throw at it means that I can try more. It's just great to know that it's made the whole process a lot smoother. Secondly, I wanna move into like DaVinci. The, the controls in there are a lot more fine-tuned and you can just make these tiny little adjustments. So as I shoot on the Blackmagic Pocket 4K, it comes with DaVinci Studio. We've got the CUDA acceleration, which utilizes the CUDA cores. Now with the improved AI performance within the kind of GPU, and utilizing that with NVIDIA Studio. When I've been color grading using face masks, and then tracking the face mask has been a lot smoother and a lot quicker. And then lastly, for me, you know, over lockdown, there wasn't really much to do so we started getting into playing games but having something that can actually handle the creative side as well as the gaming side all in one package is great i didn't have to buy like a ps5 now with the rtx 3090 obviously this is a absolute beast of a gpu i currently have a 34 inch 2k monitor but this thing can play games at 8k up to like 60 to 120 frames a second if you want i mean my, my display is like a quarter of that resolution but even at 2K and with my settings all up to max, it is playing at at least 160 frames per second. I think that is it for this video. Subscribe, you can get me to 10K. I know I'm kind of actually quite far away from it, but 10K would be a very nice milestone to reach. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a like. Yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video, whenever that is. But until then, peace. Like I'm on my tiptoes, baby, you think a little too small I got big goals, baby, ain't where the money Yeah, look, I just need the info, pronto I go and get it, and split it with my kinfolk daily And I'm the type of that might change my number on you Yeah, that's how you react when people took a slumber